Pizza is one of America's favorite foods, and making pizza at home is a lot of fun, and it's so easy. You can make the dough ahead of time, and I'm gonna show you how. Two cups of warm water, no warmer than 115 degrees. You can read it with an instant read thermometer. One package of active dry yeast. This is a fourth of an ounce envelope. So that's gonna proof in this water. It takes about five minutes. While it's proofing, I'm gonna make part of the topping. This is oven dried tomato pizza. And the tomatoes are so beautiful. These wonderful heirloom tomatoes. This is what they look like after they've been oven dried. And they're very tasty because they're sprinkled with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. And so choose the tomatoes. We went to the green market this morning and just found all of these heirloom greenhouse tomatoes. Slice the tomatoes thinly. I do about a quarter of an inch thick. And a brown tomato. This is a pretty one. I love these different heirloom colors that are being grown by a lot of farmers these days. And all different sizes too. Make the topping of a pizza very interesting. And preheat your oven to 300 degrees. And you're gonna just put these in on a piece of parchment paper and let them roast. Oh, I love the yellow. Yellow are less acidic than the red. Sometimes I even sprinkle the tomatoes with a little bit of sugar. And there, that's quite a few. A Little bit of pepper. So good when it's freshly ground like that. And salt. These roasts, you don't have to turn them over. And they're gonna stay in the oven, oh, for approximately two, two and a half hours. Make sure every tomato gets a little oil on it. Pop them in the oven and uh, you can use these not only for pizza toppings, but they're delicious in sandwiches. So now back to our pizza dough. So right into this same bowl, we're going to add three cups of all-purpose flour. And two teaspoons of fine sea salt. This is basic yeast pizza dough. Very, very easy dough. Stir this up. If it seems a little wet, don't worry, it'll absorb all the flour. If it's really wet, add some more. So there you have a nice wet dough to which we're going to add approximately two, two and a half cups more flour. Again, depending on the weather, depending on your flour, a lot of variables in making yeast doughs. Now pizza can be baked in the oven. It can also be cooked on a grill. It looks like it's gonna take another cup. Mm-hmm, looking good. I'm gonna turn this out now onto a work surface and do kneading until it's workable. And I love working on marble. Really great for pastry dough, pizza dough, bread dough. There. So our bowl is clean and ready to re-accept the dough because it's gonna rise in this bowl. And use a bench scraper to get the kneading going. We're gonna knead this for about 10 minutes. See how it's nicely pulling together? Oh, it's so pretty. But keep adding just a tad of flour. See how it's now completely coming away from the counter? That's what a well-kneaded dough does. And plunk this down right into your bowl. Cover with a piece of plastic wrap. And let rise until doubled in bulk and then it's time to start forming the pizzas. So the dough has risen. This is about two, two and a half hours, doubled in bulk, and uh, we can now deflate it. Now, flour a baking sheet 
get the flour all over it. And we're going to let the dough rise again on this floured sheet. It can rise overnight or it'll rise for about two more hours and it'll be ready to use as pizza dough. Now I'm just going to put the dough here on the surface. Cut the dough into four quarters. And you can just use your little bench scraper to cut. Form it into little rounds. So much fun working with this dough. There. It's good to fold it in on itself like this, eliminating as many of the air bubbles as possible. That's the carbon dioxide forming from the yeast. So now it's not necessary to refrigerate, but if you want to have pizza tomorrow or you're planning a, a party for your kid's birthday, you can just put several trays in the refrigerator and let it rise. Cover this again with plastic wrap and let it rest. If you're going to let it rise for an hour and a half to two and a half hours, uh, you can do so right in a warm place. There. So let that rise. Looks good, doesn't it? I have some that's already risen. It looks a lot different. So that again is doubled in bulk. And now it's time to form the pizzas. Flour your fingers a little bit and start stretching the dough. And while you're forming one pizza, keep your dough covered. You don't want the dough drying. And in the pizza parlor, this would have been done already. You know, those guys, after they've made hundreds and hundreds of pizzas, there are pizza classes where you can learn how to do that. You can use the backs of your hands like this, too, to stretch the dough. And if you have a little bit of a crust, that's fine. One thing you don't want, holes in your pizza. And you want to form about a 12-inch circle. Now, some pizza makers use a rolling pin. And you can do that, it's not cheating. And we're going to spread a very fine semolina flour on the peel. This is called a pizza peel. It allows you to easily transfer the pizza itself to the stone that's preheating in the 500 degree oven. So there, we got a nice, pretty even round. And now spread a little bit of good virgin olive oil on the dough. I like to spread it around with my fingers. And then start layering your ingredients. Fresh basil leaves. Oh, look at these basil leaves. They are so beautiful. And I'm just going to place the leaves here and there. So this is a form of margarita pizza. And then your beautiful mozzarella cheese, your tomatoes. You want to make sure that every slice will have something of interest on it. Now, if you're going to make a lot of pizzas for your friends, you can have different kinds of ingredients. And now, just a little bit of coarse salt and a little bit of pepper. It goes into a 500 degree oven onto a stone and comes out in about seven minutes. It just rolls right off the peel. And there, it was very easy. Seven minutes, that's all it takes at 500 degrees. If you had a real wood-burning oven and it was like 1,200 degrees, 90 seconds. Oh my gosh, look at this. Now, very gently, get this on the peel. Wow, that is a pizza. <gasps> so excited. Now you just put it on your board. Now if you're going to make multiples and you have some nice old breadboards like this, what a perfect place to place them. You're tempted to slice it immediately, but one minute it just settles down and then you can cut with a good pizza cutter. It's just rested for approximately one minute and uh, you can start to slice. There, perfect. And then you can go, hmm, four pieces, I think so. Use a spatula because it is cheesy and serve immediately. And if you want to gild the lily, 
a little drizzling of olive oil. Warn your friends that it's a little bit hot, but oh, so good. And now I'm gonna show you how to make another flat bread called focaccia. And I guarantee you're going to love this recipe. The first thing you're going to do is get 14 ounces of seedless red grapes, wash them, take the stems off, and coat them with about a tablespoon of your best olive oil. And just let them sit aside until you're ready to add them to the dough. Now the dough itself. Two and a quarter cups of warm water, no hotter than 115 degrees. And this is the water that you are going to add the yeast to. Three quarters of a teaspoon of active dry yeast. And notice I have fitted the machine with the flat beater. This is gonna be a wet, sticky dough and we're only incorporating the flour right now. We're not really kneading it. So four and three quarters cups. One, two, I'll start with three. Add the fourth. And three quarters. And once all the flour is incorporated into the liquid, you're going to add half a cup plus a couple tablespoons of raisins. This adds a really good flavor to the focaccia. And then the same amount of dark raisins. You beat that up. Looks perfect. So now, remove the bowl from the mixer and you're going to allow this dough to rise in the bowl. Scrape down the beater and the bowl and cover with plastic wrap until doubled in bulk. So here you have the dough, it's doubled in bulk. Put the bowl back on the mixer. Add your salt, one tablespoon, plus one and a half teaspoons. And a dough hook. Let this knead until the salt is completely incorporated and I'll show you the next step. Okay, this is well kneaded. Look at all those great raisins. Remove it from the bowl onto a floured work surface. You want this dough very sticky, so don't incorporate a lot of flour in it. And you're going to put this into the bowl with a folded side down. Cover that with plastic wrap and let rise until doubled in size. And we have a swap out of that, which I will show you now. Look how beautiful this looks. And these risings are important if you want a really well-textured focaccia. This one requires four. See, it's less sticky, but it's still moist. So just flatten this out. Fold over a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. Put it back in the bowl. There. Mm. Now let that rise until doubled in bulk. And we have one already done. And we have our dough that has risen the third time right here. And you're gonna turn this right out into a baking sheet with a third of a cup of olive oil. The oil can be all over the dough. Spread the dough into the entire pan. You want air pockets in this dough, you just want to flatten it out it's looking very good. You want all the nooks and crannies. You want the bubbles. Cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise until about doubled. We have one that has already risen. Wow, look how great it looks. Remember the grapes that we soaked in olive oil? Now's the time to just push the grapes into the surface of this dough. Wait till you see what happens. They're so beautiful. Pour the grape juice and the rest of that olive oil right on top. Two or three tablespoons of sanding sugar. This is that sparkly sugar, which will caramelize the top. And some rosemary, just for flavor. I have my rosemary plant right from the greenhouse. About two tablespoons. 
all over the top. Get this right into a 450 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes, right on the pizza stone. And I think our focaccia is all ready to come out of the oven. Oh yes, it is spectacular. Now to serve your focaccia, I would cut it into squares and serve it with coarse sea salt and a very good cheese. How beautiful. And now we're going to make one more yeast dough that is transformed into a very thin pizza-like dish called tarte flambe. The dough is easy. One half cup plus two tablespoons of warm water. And remember, not warmer than 115 degrees a half a teaspoon of active dry yeast. We don't use too much yeast in this dough. We want a paper thin crust. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Stir that up. Half a teaspoon of sugar. Right into the liquid. And mix in one and a half cups of all purpose flour and preheat your oven to 450 degrees if you're using convection, 475 if you're using uh, the traditional oven. And basically, you're going to knead this a little bit and let it rise. It's not going to rise a lot because it has very little yeast, but it is a yeast dough. I'm going to turn this out now onto a work surface. There. Now you can put a little tiny bit of olive oil in the bowl. You're going to put this dough back in that bowl for its single rising. You want the dough moist, but not too sticky. It's smooth and nice. Put it right there. And while it's rising, you can make the topping. And here we have our toppings our bacon crispy, our onion sauteed. We have a cup of very finely grated Comte cheese. I love that cheese. And a half a cup of creme fraiche. Break an egg right into the creme fraiche. Stir it in. This gets spread on top of the dough. A little tiny bit of salt, not a lot because that bacon tends to be salty. And a quarter of a teaspoon, just a quarter of a teaspoon of ground coriander. We also have about two tablespoons of thyme leaves, and this can be just sprinkled on top. So there we have it. And onto a floured surface, put your dough. This little bit of dough makes four thin rectangles. You can cut this into quarters. And while you're waiting to use the other pieces, you can just invert the bowl like this. That, that'll prevent any drying out of the dough. We're going to roll this out. Use a rolling pin because you want it thin. We don't want any holes. So basically 10 by eight. Before you put the dough on the peel, put some flour to prevent sticking. You could trim the edges if you like like this, and then spread a little of your creme fraiche egg topping, but go quite close to the edge. And now a little bit of bacon first, all in one thin layer, some of this beautiful onion, fresh thyme, and some of the finely grated cheese. This goes right into a 475 degree oven for eight to 10 minutes. And so now look, oh, it is fabulous. Push your peel under it, those sharp little motions, that is a tart flambe. Let it cool before you cut it. And that is so gorgeous. Oh, and just cut it into generous squares. So beautiful. So today you've learned how to make pizza, focaccia, and you learned how to make a tart flambe. Three great recipes with lots of variations from Martha Bakes.